Welcome to FX Options University, recorded live at the International Securities Exchange, the world's largest equity options exchange. Join the industry's top trading professionals as they provide insight and strategies for trading in the currency markets using FX options. FX options are a low-risk alternative to hedging currency moves in any market condition. So, I explain in my book what I call the 1,000 pip range transitions that when a trader is able to recognize at least a 1,000 pip range transition, that a 1,000 pip range transition is occurring, that would be very helpful, especially when you're trading leaps, let's say uh, options that expire. And I know uh, a few years back, IAC did not have any leaps, but I was looking at recently some option chains there uh, when it comes to FX options. And now, if I'm not mistaken, you even have um, options with expiration date in 2012. Uh, and some of them were there even 2013. So you have these leaves that can go uh, a year ahead of time or, or even a couple of years ahead of time. So if a trader were able to recognize the potential for a 1,000 pip range transition, and we use the methodologies of the quarters theory, can you imagine how much your option premium is going to appreciate if you're capable of taking advantage of these 1,000 pips types of moves from one large, major large quarter point, such as let's say dollar and 30 cents, all the way up to dollar and 40 cents level. Well, most recently, in uh, we've seen that happening with the euro dollar pair several times in just the last year since. Last uh, August, September of 2010, we have seen the euro making a very decisive move in completing the uh, 1,000 pip range between dollar 30 and the dollar and 40 cents in a short period of time, just a few weeks. Again, I'm talking about leaps with expiration date a year, two years from now. But again, uh, these moves that the euro did between dollar 30 and the dollar 40 cents happened in a matter of maybe a couple of months of uh, several weeks. So here's the move here for the euro dollar pair from dollar 30 to dollar 40. It even managed to move a little bit higher. That was in November of last year. If you recall, the Federal Reserve here was announcing their QE number two announcement that they're going to do another $600 billion of treasury bond purchases. That put the dollar under additional pressure. And that was the reason why the euro started even breaking above the large quarter point at the dollar and 40 cents. And at that time, it made an attempt to transition its exchange rate from the dollar thirties or the 1,000 pip range between dollar thirty and dollar forty cents into the dollar forties or the 1,000 pip range between dollar forty and a dollar and fifty cents. However, at that time, prices reached on November third, right here where my cursor is. Prices reached the sky as dollar forty two eighty one. Was that a successful completion of the first large quarter of the new 1,000 pip range between dollar 40 and the dollar 50? That large quarter, of course, being the quarter between dollar 40 and the dollar 42.50. If prices reach the size dollar 42.81, obviously, they have even surpassed the targeted large quarter point. So that that large quarter was successfully completed. But I'd like to bring your attention to what happened after that. I remember I was showing you earlier. It's very important for prices when they complete a large quarter, for them not to break below the previous large quarter point, especially when that large quarter point is a major large quarter point. And what we said in the, what we said in the beginning of the webinar is that these major large quarter points are the important junctions that mark the end of a previous 1,000 pip range, and at the same time the beginning of a new 1,000 pip range. So when prices attempt to transition into a new 1,000 pip range. It is imperative, it's crucial for the quarter steer methodology to monitor the price behavior on any type of pullbacks, because on those pullbacks, and pullbacks will occur. On those pullbacks, however, we do not want to see prices breaking below the major large quarter point that they broke above. Because if they do break below, let's say here at dollar 40 cents level, all they're going to do is prices would go into the previous 1,000 pip range. So in that case, we are not going to witness 
a successful 1,000 pip range transition of prices into the new 1,000 pip range. They would simply fall back into their preceding large floor plan. Needless to say, that is a sign of weakness. So look what happens here in November of last year. The euro goes to above dollar forty. It goes to complete the quarter between dollar forty, dollar forty two fifty. But on the pullback, a couple of days after that, it breaks below dollar and forty cent, falls back into its previous one thousand pip range, and prices stay within that one thousand pip range. And then what the euro does is simply goes down to complete the entire one thousand pip range between dollar forty and a dollar and thirty cents. How can a trader benefit here in this example from the methodology of the quarter theory? If we were able to recognize that at this time around, we're not going to have a transition into the new 1,000 pip range above $1.40, where the market or current fundamental backdrop for both of these currencies does not justify a euro dollar exchange rate at that point being above $1.40, trading between $1.40 and $1.50 or into the $1.40s. Again, these 1,000 pip range transitions are significant development, and I explained that in my book as well. They do not happen randomly because the market just decided randomly that all of a sudden now the euro should be, the euro exchange rate versus the US dollar should be into the dollar 40s. It should be above dollar 40 cents. There has to be a strong enough fundamental reason for the market to transition that exchange rate into a new 1,000 pip range for the exchange rate to be above $1.40. If such a reason is non-existent, then the market could very quickly adjust the exchange rate as it did in November of last year because the focus shifted from the Federal Reserve and the quantitative easing program, obviously, that is not uh, positive, uh, beneficial for the U.S. dollar, uh, into, after the Fed announced what was behind us, uh, it happened exactly as the market was expecting. The Fed announced that they're going to do more quantitative easing. Then the focus shifted on the problems with Ireland at that time, if you recall, the second country that ended up asking for a bailout from the Eurozone. And so the Euro, uh, obviously, in that type of an environment, the fundamental backdrop for the Euro did not justify a euro dollar exchange rate above a dollar and forty cents. So a very quick adjustment was uh, made, and the euro dollar exchange rate fell back into its previous one thousand pip range. However, let's take a look at what happened here in the last several weeks. Now the European Central Bank raised interest rates, which is a fundamentally positive development for the euro increases the yield advantage for the euro and uh, is a supportive, supportive fundamental factor for the market to consider, again, a transition of the euro dollar exchange rate above a dollar and 40 cents level. And this time around, let's pay close attention to the price behavior of the euro dollar exchange rate. As we noted in November, the first large quarter of 250 pips was completed, but on a pullback, Prices dropped below and broke below dollar and forty cents, so they fell into the dollar thirties. This time around, however, not only the first quarter of the uh, of uh, the new one thousand pip range between dollar forty and dollar forty two fifty was successfully completed here in late March, but also on the pullback to the previous major large quarter point, prices remained above dollar forty. Remember the previous prices we quoted. 1.4019. They reached within 25 pips from a dollar and 40 cents, but they never ever broke below that level. They never went back into their previous 1,000 pip range. What did I say earlier? That is a sign of strength, and it's a sign that this time around, unlike November of 2010, there's a greater probability for the exchange rate of the euro-dollar pair to transition itself successfully into the new 1,000 pip range between $1.40 and $1.50. So now, if a trader wanted to remain more conservative, they would say, 
one can say, well, great, now the 1,000 pip range, uh, new 1,000 pip range transition has occurred. Now we can expect prices to go from dollar forty to dollar and fifty cents. Not so quick. If you, if one wanted to be realistic, at least we can anticipate and predict with a greater probability of success. But we may not complete the entire one thousand pip range right off the bat. But after these requirements are met, and let me repeat them again, completion of the first large quarter of two hundred and fifty pips of a new one thousand pip range, and then on a pullback. Prices do not break below the previous major large quarter point. Those two requirements are the requirements that we must see in order to recognize a successful 1,000 pip range transition. And when a trader is able to recognize a successful 1,000 pip range transition, we can at least anticipate that prices may make further advancement into that new 1,000 pip range. Where to? Well, to what I call the major half point of the 1,000 pip range, which in this case, in a 1,000 pip range between $1.40 and $1.50, the exact middle point or the major half point of that 1,000 pip range would be the large quarter point at the $1.45. So let's take a close look here what happened after the pullback where prices stayed above 1.40. That signals that the 1,000 pip range this time, transition this time around, unlike November of 2010, is successful. The trader can anticipate with a greater probability of success that prices will make further advancement. And you're looking at a price move of 500 pips. Because each large quarter is 250 pips each, so if two large quarters between 1.40 and 1.4250 and then 1.4250 to 1.45 are successfully completed, by knowing the methodology of the quarter series, especially the 1,000 pip range transition requirements, a trader can forecast that there may be a greater probability for that type of a significant price move. And in terms of option premiums, 500 pips of a price move is a pretty good return. Now, Katrina, are we running out of time here? I, I see that we have only three minutes left until 4 p.m. Eastern time. Yes, it looks like we're... Or... Yeah, you know what? I think you have a few more slides. If it's all right by everyone, I think we can probably run a few minutes over if you want to just kind of go through the rest. Sounds good. And the reason I ask is because we have a nice quiz for all of you guys, and um, those of you who are going to successfully answer the questions, I wanted to show a few more examples, but I'm, I don't think I'm going to have a lot of time here. I have the dollar versus the Japanese yen, uh, ticker symbol is U YUK for ICFX options for that uh, currency pair, and you can see that in uh, for the majority of the last year or so, um, the price activity for the dollar against the yen is also taking place within a 1,000 pip range, which is between the major large quarter point at 80 yen and the major large quarter point at 90 yen. And what I wanted to mention quickly is that the numerical representation obviously is different. It's not 1.30, it's not a dollar 30, it's not 0.80 cents or 0.90 cents and so forth. The numerical representation is different. The numbers are different that are used to represent these uh, large quarter points, these major uh, whole numbers, major large quarter points, and so forth. But despite of the fact that their numerical representation is different, everyone can see and understand that these are constant price levels, constant price ranges that never change. It is a familiar, predictable environment which is the kind of environment that I needed as a trader uh, to be able to forecast with a greater probability of success the direction of the next price move and take advantage of it and benefit from it as a trader. Now, um, here is the quiz that uh, I have prepared for you. Okay, where is that slide, by the way? Okay, here we go, the quiz questions. First one is, if 
you would like, you can write them down, and whoever answers correctly. Okay, there's uh, one answer, and that's a correct uh, correct answer from. Wow, well, uh, yeah, Stephanie. we have, looks like we have a few correct answers actually. If you all can yeah. just email your correct answers to webinar at isc.com, we should be able to. Um, I'm sorry, webinars, that's plural. If you just want to send over your answers, uh, the first correct five responses, we will be sending prizes. So send your responses over to webinars at isc.com. And the email address is now on the bottom of the screen. There we go. So make sure you send your emails right there. And the three questions are, first, how many pips does each large quarter have? How many pips are in each small quarter? And uh, the third, more difficult question is, which will tell me whether you did pay attention to this presentation or not. I hope you all the took first, notes. I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. The third question is, what is the main premise of the quarter theory? So hopefully you'll be able to answer all of them. And the first five who answer correctly and email to webinars at isc.com will receive prices. Great. All right, okay, we look well, forward with, to getting your emails, that, guys. Uh, Katrina, I'd, I'd like to thank you for putting together the webinar today. It was a, a pleasure to be back and uh, do this presentation for the International Securities Exchange. Thanks to all of our attendees. And uh, if you do have any further questions, if you would like to listen to my daily analysis when it comes to the currency, uh, currencies and foreign exchange market, make sure to join me and listen daily to my All Things Forex live daily broadcast on my website, www.allthingsforex.com. Now, this is a little bit of an older uh, uh, graphic here and an older slide. Uh, we have a new time frame for 2011. The actual live program is now from 8 a.m. until 9 a.m., Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. But not to worry if you're working during that time or if you're not able to attend the live webinars uh, or uh, live broadcast, you can always go to allthingsforex.com and listen to the archives. We have archives going back uh, a month. Uh, 1, 8 a.m. Eastern Time, 8 a.m. Eastern Time, 8 to 9 a.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. Uh, and uh, because the broadcast is basically syndicated on 10 or uh, 12 other different websites around the world, we also archive it. We record the live trading session, uh, train, uh, the live uh, broadcast, and then we replay it in a loop for the next 12 hours. So you can listen to it that way or you can simply go to allthingsforex.com and you can access the uh, archives. And a lot of people actually download. It's an MP3 file, and you can download the archive of the program and listen to it on your iPod and any other devices. Once again, thank you all very much for uh, uh, being with me today. Thank you to International Securities Exchange. Thank you, Katrina. And I look forward hey, to William. seeing you soon. Great. All right. So thanks again to Ilian for teaching us a little bit more today about the quarters theory. Thanks to all of you for joining us. If you'd like to learn anything about the FX options that we discussed today, please visit www.fxoptions.com. We do have a lot of resources there available to anyone who's interested in learning more about the various currency pairs. There are free trade alerts that you can sign up for if you're not really totally familiar with the product. We do have podcasts. We have a lot of content available there, so please be sure to check it out. We do hope to see you at our upcoming webinars. We will have another one next week. So make sure to visit the latest schedule at isc.com slash webinars. Uh, thanks again to everyone, and I guess we'll just see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.
Thank you for participating in this week's session. Please join us again next week. Get trading ideas, exchange rates, webinars, news, and commentary. Visit www.fxoptions.com. ISE FX Options can be easily traded through all options-enabled brokerage accounts. These exchange-listed securities are cash-settled in U.S. dollars and have a European-style exercise.